Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to work on the stop plate and angle bracket as far as dimensioning goes. Uh, we've got to draw a multi-view of each. <clears throat> the multi-views are not that bad. The only thing that's going to be new, of course, is that we've got, if we look at this one, if you notice, we've got what we call a counter bore going into the hole. So you've got a small hole that's drilled all the way through the object, and then we enlarge the hole, a counter bore, to sit a bolt head down in. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, if we look up here at our notes, what we will see is this is a little different now. You've got to be able to read these numbers and read these letters, of course, dimension H, dimension J. I'm sorry, dimension L. We've got JN. So from J to N is a half of an inch. So we have to notice these things and realize what we're looking at. And that's going to be important to do. Um, we've also got uh, some other numbers on here that we'll need to pay attention to. If you notice G, look up at the, our note, and the fourth line down says G equals boss. A boss is a cylinder that stands up above an object, proud of an object. So the actual cylinder itself is called a boss, and it is one and a quarter. And if you notice, it says by 50 high. There should be a decimal point there. It should say 0.50. Okay, so it's one and a quarter inches in diameter. It's also a half of an inch high. Then the hole, the little hole going through it is a half inch. The counter bore is 0.88 or 7 eighths, and it is also uh, a, a, an eighth of an inch deep. So that's what we're going to be drawing. And if you notice, we've got that drawn right here. I've already got this one dimensioned, but I'm going to show you how to draw that here in a minute. Now let's go look at the other one. The other one is a little more intense. Because now what we've got is an interesting little shape. It's only two inches by two and a half inches and by uh, three quarters of an inch tall. So it's two by two and a half by three quarters. Uh, we've got three holes that's five sixteenths in diameter, and they've got a counter sink. So that's for a screw head to fit down in, an angled screw head. If you notice it says 82 degrees, 82 degrees is the common angle for a counter sink. Uh, you can get other numbers, but that is the common one. And then we've got a uh, semicircle cut through this inclined surface. Now it is cut through it vertically. It is not perpendicular to the surface. It is cut through vertically. So that's something else that we're going to have to deal with. So when we look at our actual drawings, this is what we're going to end up with. But how are we going to actually draw those? Well, if you notice, I've got them down here again. So let's take and let's draw those. So I'm going to get rid of these pretty quick. We're going to go to Erase. I'm going to Delete. There we go. And now they're gone. Uh, I'm also going to come in and I am going to cut off the dimensions. Okay. So this is what we're going to be drawing. So let's start with a pretty basic drawing. What we've got now, I'm going to slide down so our screen is clear. I'm going to come into line. And I'm going to draw my basic shape of the first one. This one goes really, really, really quick. So the whole thing, overall length or uh, width, which is a better choice of terms, is a uh, 4.25. The height of this object, which is H, is 0.75. And then we're going to come back our distance here. So there's our front view. Now I'm going to go ahead and lay out some other stuff. If we notice that AB, when we find AB, AB is 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to offset, and it's going to do 0 0.38. Uh, I'm going to do 0 0.375 because I know that is the correct distance. because that gets me halfway. That's what I want it to be. Okay, so there's that. Uh, then JN, we said, was a half inch. So I'm going to hover here. I'm going to drag over. I'm going to say 0.5, start me a line, come up. So there's that. Now I can go ahead and clean up some stuff. I can drag this back. I could also use trim. So there's my basic shape in front of you. Uh, we'll worry about the cylinder here in a second. I'm going to come in. And I know that cylinder is a half of an inch high, so I'm going to go up. I want to go up two and a half inches from this point. So I'm going to get a couple inches between my views. So I am going to come back and put in that boss here in a minute. Our depth of the object is W. So when we find W, we notice it's two inches. And lay this in, lay this in. Uh, we do not need a right side because this will fully describe it. Um, you know, here's a case where I'm an object. A lot of times I will come in, hover here, drag up, click, draw me a line right there, and then just quickly click on it and change its layer to hidden. Go ahead and get that 
placed. Okay, the cylinder or boss itself, uh, we have to find dimension AC. That tells us how far in it's located. AC is one inch, and AD, when we find it uh, up top, is one inch also. Well, we know it's two inches deep, so that's the center point. So it works out really well. I can hook, I can. Uh, Hover here and draw me a line, or I can just go straight to diameter. Hover, drag out, tell it I want my center point one inch away. So I started in the midpoint and told it one inch away. Now, the boss itself is one and a quarter in diameter. So there it is. Now I'm going to go back into diameter. I'm going to click, and the hole is a half inch. So there's it. And then the ball, uh, the uh, counter bore is seven eighths. Go back to the center point again and say point eight seven five. Remember, don't put in 0 0.88, put 8, 0.875. You want your numbers to be right. So there's that. Now, our object, if we come to our quadrant and come down here and click, the boss is a half inch high. Remember, it says point, it says 50 instead of 0.5. Don't forget to fix that. Then I can hover here and drag straight down and get it in the right place. So there's the cylinder standing up on top of it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change over into my hidden layer. I want to do my countersink. I'm sorry, my... Uh, Counter bore. I'm going to hover and drag down. I'm going to click here. It's only an eighth of an inch deep. And again, it says 0.12, but I'm going to do 0.125 so I get it right. And we'll come over. We're using the second biggest circle to do this. Okay. And then we're going to do the small circle. That's the small hole. It starts at the bottom of the counter bore and comes all the way down. Same thing here. Bottom of the counter bore, all the way down. Oops. Look what happened. I let it grab there by accident. So that's where you've got to be careful. You want to get that X. Hover, drag down, click, make sure we get an X and click. So now it's in the right place. This line has to go all the way across it because this uh, counter bore is bigger than the hole itself. So there will be an edge there. Okay. All right, let's put in a center line. So we'll go to center line real quick. We'll come in here, click and click. Let's drag it out a quarter of an inch each way. And we will, of course, mirror it. And see, while I've got it highlighted in blue, I can hit mirror. I can work backwards. 45 degrees as always. And we've got that in place. Uh, then we're going to copy this down and drop it in. Now, this, of course, is too long. So we're going to shorten it back up and then lengthen it back to the quarter of an inch beyond. So there's that. And there is that object drawn that quickly. So now all we have to do is dimension it. Well, dimensioning is uh, the same as usual, but there is one little catch in this one because we do have the counter bore. So let's go ahead and let's go into dimension. And I turned off that layer. I had forgotten that. I'll turn it back on so we can work on it. So now we're going to go linear. I'm going to get the, I'm going to go ahead and work on the circle first. Edge of the circle, drag out. Same thing here. Remember, click at the quadrant so we don't have that gap. Okay, and drag down. That takes care of that part of it. But we've got more dimensions to do now because we've located, left, right, located, uh, up and down. We also have to tell the diameter of the actual cylinder, and that is done as a linear dimension. So we're going to drag it up here like this, but we've got to edit this dimension. I'm going to go in front of the dimension. Let me get on it. There we go. I've got a flashing cursor in front of it. And I should be able to come here and put diameter. Oh, no. My whole thing went away. If it does, just type in 1.25 there, and you're good. So that's all you've got to do for that. This is how we denote a cylinder, okay? Now we need to worry about our counter bore. You wouldn't have the counter bore if it wasn't for the small hole to start with. So we actually dimension it first. We're going to use our leader, and we're going to go to the center of the hole. We're going to drag out and up. And now we're going to do our notes. This is where we're going to use the cheat sheet that has the uh, notes on it for uh, our symbols. Because if we click here, see if we look down through here, have we got a counter bore symbol? I don't see one. So that's the reason why we can click other and see if there's anything else. And there's not. So we're going to have to uh, make our own symbols here. And that's why the GDNT. So we do need diameter. We know that. We can grab that from here. So the diameter of the small hole is 0 0.50. We're going to put a space. Now we're going to do the counter bore symbol, which is a lowercase v. Okay. And that is 0 0.88. We're going to do another space. And now we need to know the depth. 
which is x. And the depth of this is an eighth of an inch, which is 0.12. We're working to two decimal places. So that is what your note should read. And you read it across. I'm going to grab this leader now, and I'm going to drag it back. And look where I'm going to go, to the edge of the small hole, because that's the first note. So the small hole has a diameter of a half inch. There is a counter bore attached to that small hole that has a diameter of 0.88 and a depth of an eighth. There we go. That's all we got to do. So we've got that taken care of. We've got this little notch down here. We're going to, we really need to dimension it down here where it's really clear. So we're going to drag down here like this. That'll take care of that. And now we need to uh, get another dimension on here for this. We need to get what this is. And notice, remember me saying the other day, I really don't like putting dimensions all the way around an object, but sometimes we don't have a choice. Okay. We don't want these to where they look like they're overlapping, so we're going to stretch them out a little bit. So there's that corner dimension. Now I'm going to give an overall dimension from bottom to top. But now notice, I'm going to drag this on out here for a minute because I've got one more dimension to put in, something that we haven't talked about. I need to know how tall this boss is, and I'm going to line it up with this dimension. So there, we've got that now. The other dimension that we need, of course, is we need depth and we need width. Because this is rectangular and really clean, I'm going to dimension that off the top. So I'm going to drag it down. And then I'm also going to drag this one out here. I'm going to line it up with this one. And there is that object full of dimension. Look how many it took for the cylinder with the counterbore. One, two, three, four, five dimensions to fully dimension that. Okay? And then this one only took two. And then, of course, we've got overall height, width, and depth. So there's that one. That one's pretty clean. Okay? So now let's do our other one real quick. Let's start with a rectangle. Our object is width 2 inches wide. Our height is 0.75. And I'm going to come back and draw my box here and here. I'm going to hover and I'm going to drag up a couple inches. I'm going to get my same thing here. Now this is going to be weird because it is going to be a little bit deeper than it is wide. It's two and a half inches deep. And we will draw, come over two inches, two and a half for our depth. Again, we will draw a right side view for this one. The reason why is to clarify the image we're looking at. Okay, so there's what we've got. Now let's start on our front view. It's really a simple drawing. This object is two inches wide. The cut comes from one inch in and goes down to a quarter. So I can say line, hover, drag up, and tell it to go up 0.25 for my first point and go to my midpoint. That's all there is to it. Now I'll go ahead and shorten this down just that quick. So that's got that in place. And it's pretty simple. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and draw me a line in the top view for that edge. There we go. That takes care of that. So there's my slanted surface. I'm going to go ahead and draw me a line in the right side view. Now I'm going to tell you something here. This drawing works really well with a miter line. So I am going to lay out a miter line. Remember, it's a 45 degree line. I line up my back two corners. And that'll get me correct, okay? Here's the reason why. This big arc has got a radius of 0.75. So I'm going to go into radius. I'm going to draw it where I can see it, which is this one. It's a 0 0.75. There we go. And now I'm going to hit trim and select all. And I'm going to put that in place. So there it is. Now look what I can do. I'm going to go ahead and click here and drag straight down. This line will be a hidden line in the front view. So I'm going to change it to hidden. I'm going to drag that down until I hit my intersect right there. Okay. Now, notice something. I just realized I was drawing on the dimension layer because I had done this. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to highlight everything but that hidden line I just drew. And I'm going to change it over to object. There we go. And now I'm going to go back into object to make sure I'm in, in the correct layer. Now I'm going to draw me a line from here across. And I only want the width of the object. So there. And now I'm going to come here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this point, drag across. I'm going to click there and drag all the way to the bottom. I'm going to hover here, drag across. When I get to the intersect, drag all the way down to the bottom. Just like that. Okay. And now I'm going to trim these back to where they need to be. I'm going to trim them back to right there. Okay. 
Now, these two sides are vertical. I'm going to drag this back up. To, oops, sorry, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave them right where they're at. But what I'm going to do, notice what I've got here. Now, this is an interesting little thing that we can do. We're going to use a command called ellipse. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our center point ellipse. We know it's dead center of this. We know one end point is here now, and we know the other is here. That's major and minor axis. We will see that. So now I can take and click and drag this down to the quadrant. Click and drag this down to the quadrant. There we go. And now let's go in to trim and select all. Let's get rid of that. Let's zoom in. Let's get rid of this, this, these, and these. Okay, there we go. And now we can get rid of that top line because that's what we used to lay that out with. Pretty neat drawing, huh? Now here's something that happened. Look, oh no, I got rid of a line I shouldn't have got rid of. So I can either stretch that one fully across or I can use the join command because they're in the same plane. Click on both of them and they'll put them back together. Remember, the join command is the two arrows nose to nose. Okay? So there's our uh, object lines that we can see. Now we need to worry about the holes that's in this. Those holes are uh, 5 sixteenths in diameter. There's three of them and they're of 0.45 in. So I'm going to offset 0.45. Okay. And the last one's in the middle. So now I'm going to offset 0.8. I could have went 0 0.8, 0 0.8 because that's what the drawing says, but that, that would have got me at the same place. Offset 0.8. So putting these holes in, uh, we've got it set up, like I said, uh, this one's in 0.45 inches, and then it's 0 0.80 from here to here, and then 0 0.80 from here to here, or you could come in 0.45 here because it is the same distance if you add everything up. Uh, what we need to do now, of course, is find our center point the other way. It's a half inch in. Uh, I'm just going to go into circle, and I'm going to do diameter. I'm going to hover here, and I'm going to drag out and say 0.5 just to get it in the right place. There it is. And now our diameter is 5 sixteenths. I'm going to type in 5 sixteenths instead of 0 0.31 because that'll get it the right size. And then our uh, counter sink is going to be 5 eighths. And I'm going to do the very same thing. I'm going to type in uh, 0 0.625 or you can do 5 slash 8, either one. And that'll get it the right size. So there we go. That's got that where it needs to be. Uh, I'm going to turn this into a center line. And I'm going to drag them back. I'm going to show you something right here that's going to be interesting when we do this. All right, so when we drag them in, now let's drag this out a quarter of an inch, 0.25, and look what happens. Okay, so we get on out there in pretty good ways. Drag this one out, 0.25, and we get off of that one too. Now, yes, we do cross these lines here. Um, it makes it look a little funky, but that's okay. We can live with that. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to mirror this and go ahead and get it rotated. I'm going to use it and make it longer here in a minute. And I'll get that one there. Now what I can do is I can copy, and I'm going to copy the two circles that represent our countersink. I'm going to copy that center line, and I'm going to copy it from the midpoint straight up to these lines. Okay, now I can get rid of these lines right here because I just wanted a reference point. I'll take this, drag it all the way to the top of the circle, and then drag it on out, 0.25, and get that in the right place. So that's got that. The other thing that I need to do is I need to go ahead and I need to find the center of this circle here, and even though it's a half circle. So I'm going to come in. I'll put it on center layer to do this, and I will click on the end point, click on the end point, and then I'm going to click and drag that end point in a sixteenth each way. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this center line and I'm going to stretch it on out. And I'm going to stretch it out another quarter of an inch beyond and get it there also. So you see, though, the only thing is it did kind of booger up this center line right here. So what we could do instead of doing that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to come in and I'm going to start a center line here. And I'm going to go this way and I'm actually going to connect to the end point right there. And I'm going to take this center line and I'm going to stretch it out 0.25 and let's see what we get. Yeah, that looks a little bit better right there <clears throat> by doing it that way. I know we still don't have our break right on the center line. We do this way, but we don't this way. But that kind of cleans it up. Okay, so that gets those in the right place. 
Now, we need to show our holes down here in the front view, of course. The little hole, unless you're told otherwise, goes all the way through. Now, if it has a depth emblem, and the depth emblem, I'm going to draw one right here just to show. I'm going to draw a great big one. Uh, the depth emblem will look something like this. Like I said, I'm drawing this really big so you can see it. There we go. That's, that's the symbol for depth. Okay, if you ever see that, you know what it means. That means the hole does not go all the way through it. Remember, the hidden lines that we see in the other views tell us if it goes all the way through. If we see that it stops short, then we're going to see a note or we're going to have to put a note on that represents how deep the holes go. As we see back on this one, because this goes all the way through, it's a, it's a through bore or through cut, so we don't have to worry about doing depth. Same thing on this one. So I'm going to change over to my hidden layer. Go in the line. I'm going to do the small hole first. Drag down. Drag all the way down like that. Now I can copy. I can uh, draw another one, whichever one I'd rather do. I'm just going to copy this and put this here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy it again. And I'm going to copy it back this way. Now this looks kind of weird. But what I'm doing is I'm going to rotate this. And I'm going to use that as my point. So I'm going to go to rotate. Select the object. Hit enter. This is going to be my base point. Now, remember, our angle is 82 degrees. That's an inclusive angle. That's the entire thing all the way across the whole diameter. So we only need half of that. So half of 82 is 41. So there is how far in that slant is going to come. Now I'm going to take this and drag it back to the intersection. I'm going to take this and drag it down to the intersection. And right there is what it's going to look like, okay? That's what that side's going to look like. Now, I've got one over here on this side, and there's no way for me to mirror to get this over here. I really should have done just one side and mirrored it over. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to draw me a line down like this, and it is on the hidden layer. That's fine. I'll end up changing that here in a minute. Now, I can mirror by having that line there. So there's that. And I will need a hidden line here because there is an edge all the way around where the angle edge meets the vertical edge of the hole. Okay, let's go ahead and change this to center. There we go. And because I've got it here, I can go ahead and drag this down 0.25. And of course, I can drag this and then drag it back up 0.25. There we go. So that's what a counter sink looks like. So remember, counter bore, counter sink. Okay. Now, we should have three of these over in this view. But I'm not going to put those there because if I do, it really, really creates an issue in here. I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about creating an issue. So let's do go ahead and copy it over just to show you what we mean. Offset 0.45. I'm going to use the edge of the line. And then there. Okay, so this is what it would look like if I did that. I'm going to show you how muddy this drawing gets in a hurry. Because there's three of them. That's what that would look like. See how confusing that is? Okay, so it's, it's really kind of a mess when we get to that. I'm going to show you what we're going to do instead of doing that. Because we've got it represented here. So now we need to go ahead and put our dimensions on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my miter line. I've done everything I want to do with that. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, of course, we've got our angle here. And we've got locations, endpoints, and endpoints as far as locations goes. Uh, when we do this, we can work off of a common corner, or we can work off the way they've done it here. If you notice up here in the original drawing, I did it the way they did it. Okay. Uh, I personally still like working off of a common corner, but this is not bad right here. So let's come down here and let's work on this. Let's go to our dimension layer. And remember, we're going to do our smallest dimensions first. So there to there, here to here. Now notice what it does. It does throw the quarter inch out. So let's pop it and put it in the middle of the, the number. Drag it back just a hair. There we go. Okay. So see that cleans that up really nice. Okay. And now what we need to do uh, is let's look at what we are going to have as far as our other dimensions, of course, we got to do our whole dimensions. Drag down, drop it in, drag up, drop it in, 
Remember, I'm pulling this out here, and see here how this kind of overlaps a little bit? So I'm going to drag this down just a little bit more just to clean it up a little bit. There we go. It looks a whole lot better. And now I need to go ahead and I need to put in another dimension from here to here. Drag out. See, it wanted to pop that dimension up top, so let's pull, pull it down and put it in the middle. Okay. And remember, one, two, three, four parts. We do need another dimension here. Okay, so there, that gets our spacing done on those. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and put our numbers in for this actual countersink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I can either use the diameter dimension or I can do my uh, note and do it from a, a liter. Uh, let's, let's do a liter, okay? So I'm going to come in here. Again, I'm going to point at the center. We're going to leave it at 45. I may end up moving that because I'm kind of close to that corner. So I'm going to click here. So now what do I need? Well, I need the diameter to start with. So the diameter is a lowercase n. And of course, the whole size now is 0.31. But I'm going to tell you something I want to do. I want to go back and in front of that, I want to put a quantity. I'm going to say 3x. Oops, look what happened. I had a lowercase symbol on did you see what that was though? The lowercase x is that depth symbol that we talked about. So I'm going to go to a capital X and put a space in there. So now I'm going to go back. So there's three of these holes, diameter 0.31. I'm going to drop down a line. And now the text is going to be our countersink symbol. Well, our countersink symbol, and this is one that I always have to think about, is W. There we go. W, 5 eighths, 0.62. Okay, and then of course they put in by 82. Now remember, I told you that the by 82 degrees is uh, common. You don't really have to put that because it is normal, but we will put it in there, okay? Just so it'll be there because that's what the note calls for. So there we go. There's our note. It's in there pretty good. Um, I am going to zoom out and look. And yes, that, that note is kind of close to that corner. So I'm going to drag it on up. I'm going to get it on up here a little bit steeper, like that. Uh, it cleans it up a little bit better. Uh, notice how this doesn't really line up good. This is one of the few things that I don't like. Now, there's a couple of ways we can clean this up. I'm going to go to the end of this, and I'm going to hit, oops. I'm going to go to the end, and I'm going to put in a uh, one space and see if that helps. No, it didn't really help it. What you may have to do if you want to straighten up your note is you may have to explode it. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't explode it yet till you move this leader, because remember, it needs to point to the small circle. Be careful, because if you're not real careful, what will happen here, see how my arrow is in the way right there? It's not letting me grab the circle right there at the intersection point. <clears throat> so what I am going to do is I will go ahead and explode this, and I'm going to move my arrowhead. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to grab it by its point. Oops, let's do it again. Undo. Now let's move. Move the arrowhead from the point back. And now look what I've got here. There, see, I don't, there's my intersection. That's what I'm after, okay? So that's where I want that. That cleans that up. Now I can go ahead and clean up this node a little bit. Now if you notice, it's still all one piece, so I'm going to explode it. Okay, now it's two separate pieces. I'm going to slide this over and line it up a little bit better. May slide this one back just a hair, not much, just a hair. Let's see if that's too much. And that's pretty good. So there, that's got that cleaned up. Okay, so I've got it, got all that done. Location, 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 location. Let's zoom in. Uh-oh, look what happened here. See here, this really made a mess right here. Not real sure what happened. Let's get rid of that dimension and redo that one. Ah, there's the problem. It's the arrowhead on the 45. It's too long. So how do you fix that? Well, when I click on I don't have an option to fix this. What you're going to have to do, believe it or not, is explode that dimension. And now I'm going to shorten it down by half its length. And now I'm going to come back in and put that 80 dimension back in there, 0 0.80 dimension back in there, and see if that fixes it. Let's see if now our distances look right. 
much, much better. See, now we've got, it's a lot cleaner. It's what we want it to look like, okay? So that sort of takes care of all that. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Well, we need this dimension here. It is a radius, so I'm going to use the radius dimension. I'm going to click. I'm going to drag. Oh, no, it's going to do that funny thing, isn't it? So I will have to use the leader command. And here again, where am I going to click at? Well, I'm going to click on the midpoint. I'm going to drag out. I'm going to do radius of 0.75 like that. Now I'm going to click on it, and I'm just going to do my extension and let it go to there. Good spot for it, okay? That cleans that up really, really nice. So what do we do about the rest of it? What else do we need here? Well, we, we need, now if we come back up here and look, how about the location of where that hole's at? Yeah, that's something that you will forget pretty quick if you don't pay attention to what you're doing. It's real easy. You gave it size, but we haven't gave its location. Now we've gave its location. So that really makes a difference, okay? So the only dimensions now that we've got left, because we give location and size, location and size, location size right there. So now all we need is our overall height, width, and depth. Where are we going to put those? Again, we love to work between views, if at all possible. But the way this one lays out, especially with this leader, it would create a problem. So we're going to have to dimension this one over here on the end for it to be cleaner. So we're going to drag out here and look what this does. All of a sudden now, this node is too close. So I'm going to go into the, my stretch mode. Where I've exploded this, I'm going to have to use stretch. Now the way stretch works, click on it, get everything you want that you want to move inside the box, and then what you want to stretch is touching the box. So the angled line of the leader is what I'm going to stretch. Now I'm going to grab it at the end point, and I'm going to go up. And now look what it's trying to do. It's trying to change my angle. So I've got to be really careful going up with this. There we go. Get up just a little bit higher. And that kind of cleans it up, okay? We wouldn't have known that to start with. So it's, it does create sort of an interesting little problem. Okay, I'm going to drag this back just a hair. There we go. Clean that up. Now I'm going to dimension from here to here. For my overall height, I'm going to line it up with the first line of dimensions, which is there. Your instinct would be to take it all the way out and line it up with this one, but remember, it's first dimension away, so there's where we're going to go. And then we need overall width. So do we put it in this view? Do we put it in this view? I personally, I like it in the front view, but I've got a better line here. So I'm going to go ahead and go here. It wouldn't be wrong if you put it in the front view. Okay? So overall height, width, and depth. I've gave location, location, size of all my features. And of course, the other thing, now we'll show you this. If we had done this a different way, what we would have done would have been this. I'll show you both ways of doing this. And I can grab my grips and change my locations like this. So this would have been what it would have looked like if we'd have done it the other way. Either way is fine. Okay, I do like this. I like how clean this is. Uh, but like I said, the actual drawing showed it here and here. That's personal preference. I like this better, but a lot of people do this. So while I'm here, notice what we've got. A note, because we didn't show these holes. Note, countersunk holes omitted for clarity inside view. So we do need to put that down here because we didn't show anything. Why did we even show the side view? Well, it helps show the way this is cut, the way the hole is cut. So it's really a good idea to have there. We do need a center line. And this is easy enough. I can copy this center line, grab it from there, go to the midpoint, and that puts it in place. We do need that center line. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into text. I'm going to create a text box. And again, remember, I'm just now starting to use text boxes. I didn't like them before. Okay, there we go. Make sure your cap lock's on. Note, countersinks, omitted, inside view for clarity. Now, I don't really care how that's written in there. I wouldn't mind having that box just a little bit longer. Let's see if there's any way we can make it. Yeah, that looks better. And now I'm going to move it back just a little bit, kind of center it up on the actual view. There. That way I got it to two lines of text. Okay. So there's our two 
drawings fully dimensioned and fully drawn. Pretty interesting little concept, but it gets you going in the way we need to. Okay, so have a great week. Enjoy drawing these. Look forward to talking to you again. See you.